Hi there guys, this is Chris Coney speaking and welcome back to the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to follow on as a sort of a part two to a previous video that I did. Today we're going to do EOS, how to generate some new keys. So I've generated another presentation for you, generated, made another presentation for you. This one's called how to generate new EOS keys for security and account recovery. So let's get into this. So like I say, this is a follow on from a video I released on the 9th of April 2019. It was called EOS and Ledger Wallets upgrading security of your owner and active keys. In that video, I talked about the difference between the owner and active keys in an EOS account. And then I said, the process for generating a new key would come in a future video. This is that video, okay? So I said I would create a separate video on how to generate new key pairs. This is the video on how to generate new key pairs so you can separate your owner and active permissions in your EOS account. So let's go into this a bit further, shall we? One new idea I had since that last video was if you want to be uber, uber secure, you could do this. I said I invited you lot to sit, to give me some arguments as to why you would even need to separate your owner and active permissions if you, if you were using a hardware wallet. Because if you're using a hardware wallet, I said it doesn't really matter if your keys are the same because hardware wallets are ridiculously secure anyway. But then I thought, okay, if you want it to be like ridiculously secure, you could get two Ledger Nano S hardware wallets and you could assign the key pair on one of them to be the owner and you could assign the key pair on the other Ledger wallet to be the active. So you'd have, you know, two public addresses, two private keys, but they'd be stored in separate Ledger Nano S's, right? So the key pair would be uniquely stored in a unique Nano S hardware wallet. So that's one way of doing it. It's more expensive because you have to have two of them and it depends on your application. For the average user, you know, unless you're absolutely paranoid, this is unnecessary. But this account structure is useful for more complex business applications and stuff like that. So if, uh, if you have that use case, then go ahead and take that piece of advice. All right, so how to generate a new EOS key pair securely. Ideally, we want to do this offline, do it on our own computers. And that's where this piece of software comes in that was created by EOS Cafe Block. So you go to eoskey.io and you download this um, application that runs on your local computer. So if you want to be super paranoid about it, download it and you can then disconnect your internet connection while you generate the new keys. So this is an offline key generation tool. So of course I downloaded this, um, loaded it up. There's no installation really. You just run it straight from the folder after unzipping the files. So then you go to the left menu. There's only three options on the left menu. One is to use the fallback registration process. That's not for this video. You want to click on the second option down, which says generate valid key pair, generate and validate key pairs. So you click on that and you'll see the screen on the right that has three different tools in it. The one we're going to use is the one at the top that's called generate keys. So all you do is you click the generate button and then as if by magic, Next to where it says public key and private key, ta-da, a new key pair will be generated. Brand, brand new keys. And then there's other two tools there. They're just for validating the keys, but you can do that if you want, but they should be valid given that we've only just created them. So that's the easiest step ever. You just click the generate button and your new keys will appear as if by magic. So make absolutely sure that you save these keys somewhere safe before you do anything with them. At this point, when you generate them, they're pretty much useless because they've got no permissions and they're just brand new randomly generated keys. But as you start using them, of course, they'll become more and more important. So at this point would be the good point, the main point, the most important time to back them up before you start playing with them. OK, so I just wanted to be responsible there and remind you of that. Moving on to the next step. Now, once you've got those keys backed up and generated the brand new pair of keys, now we can assign account permissions to those key pairs because at the minute they don't do anything. They're just a set of keys, right? So this is the missing piece from my last video. You know, when I showed you the process of going to blocks.io and then changing the active key to um, a brand new key that you generated. In the previous video, I didn't actually tell you how to generate the keys because that's what we're doing now. So here's the missing piece. So that new public key that we just created or generated, that was that's what I would put as the active permission for my account. So I'd go back to blocks.io, log in. Uh, this is the same screenshot from the last video for my Chris J.S. Coney account. And we have owner permissions at the top with the public key. 
We have active permissions at the bottom with a different public key. But what I might want to do is take the new public key that I've just generated with generated with this tool, uh, the, the EOSKey.io tool, and pop it right in the active key box and then click save. The button, the save button isn't there right now because um, I haven't made any changes in this screenshot. But as soon as you change something, the green save permissions button will appear and then you sign that transaction to save it. Make sure you're doing this and paying attention when you do this. Because like I said in the last video, this process of changing permissions, it can result if you're not careful. And if you don't know what you're doing, it can result in you basically transferring control of your EOS account to someone else. So just make sure you follow the process very carefully and you're paying attention at every step. In any case, if you only change the active key, the active key, you've still got control of the owner key to repair any damage that you do. So that's just a, a fail safe. So once you've done that, um, then you can import that new private key into your chosen wallet software. Because while we've just assigned permissions to that key to your account, you need to actually sign transactions and submit you know, requests to smart contracts and things like that. So we have to import that new private key into wallet software so that wallet software can then sign transactions for us. If you want a good recommendation for a mobile wallet, EOS Links is one of the best ones that I've personally used. And recommendations for desktop wallets, uh, Scatter is probably the one I use exclusively. And Simplios is another one that I've used quite a bit. But I only use Simplios in the beginning. But now I use Scatter almost exclusively. Now the exact process, because I know what you're going to say, Chris, how do you, what's the exact process to import your keys into these wallets? Well, believe it or not, that's yet another set of videos that I would have to do, which I will consider doing by request from supporters. So if you're a supporter and you would like specific tutorials on how to take the keys we just generated and import them into these wallet softwares, please submit that request and I will consider it. All right, that's it for today. Please like the video, subscribe and share this with your EOS community friends. Please help to fund this work. It's not some casual hobby I'm doing on the sides and on weekends. This is how I make my entire living. And you can imagine how that's gone in the bear market. It's been a right struggle. I'm not asking for sympathy and I'm not going to share all the things I've had to do to carry on doing this, but I have not skipped a beat despite all of the numbers tanking. So without support from my patrons, that would be a much less likely. So by the time you watch this video, it's not just a case of you know 15 minutes to watch it. Hours of time and energy and research have gone into this. It takes a lot of time to structure it and make it simple. That's, you know, cutting out all the superfluous information is where most of the time goes. So by the time you get it, you're getting it in a, in a nice packaged format. So please help make it sustainable. Don't leave it to someone else. Don't think, well, I'll leave it to someone else to support the show. If everyone thinks that way, well, then no one would support me. And then I'd have to turn to sponsors. And then you get annoyed, but then that would be my only option. So you can't blame me if I start running lots of sponsored ads and stuff like that, because that will be my only option if I don't get enough supporters. I'd rather not turn to sponsors, but if I have to, I will do, because one thing I'm not doing is quitting this mission. So I'm creating content one way or another, whether you support it or whether sponsors support it. I'd rather you support it, but I'll turn to sponsors if I have to. Also, because this was some of a security-oriented episode, you can check out my course called Blockchain Security Essentials. That's another way you can support me. The link for that will down, be down in the video description. It's called Blockchain Security Essentials. Make your crypto impossible to steal. And the final way you can support me is as a patron. As a patron, you can earn cryptocurrency rewards for consuming my content, like yesterday's episode, which you'll see here. This is the previous video, EOS and Ledger Wallet, how to tell the difference between owner and active keys. Here's my patrons beginning to post comments. There's one of them. That uh, patron there, Archon3D, got 48 cents in cryptocurrency rewards just for posting the comment on that episode and being a supporter. And if you do that every day, that can rack up quite quickly. So it's a good time to accumulate crypto if we're going to go to the new bull market, just saying. But even if we don't, you can add up the rewards and they you pretty much end up getting most of the money you pledge back anyway. But that is all I've got for you today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.